Alright, welcome back to another episode of the Extreme Lifestyle Living Podcast. Man, I'm having so much fun doing these. I uh, I have like a whole new ritual that I do. Not, not a ritual, I shouldn't say it that way, but a uh, whole new way of doing these podcasts and I'm having so much fun. I find it's exhilarating. Uh, the last six to eight months of my life, I haven't had much time to really do self-expressive activities aside from uh, business ventures and building my business. And like, don't get me wrong, like it's very self-expressive of what I do with my day-to-day job, but I wasn't very creative. I wasn't doing anything new, if you will. So that was kind of catching up with me, you know, I was getting kind of tired of felt like I was going through the motions, you know, so really finding this podcast and getting back into the rhythm for a lot of you new listeners out there. I actually started this uh, almost two full years ago now and I actually started off with video that I ended up never really posting but the podcast has always been like a big avenue of my life that uh, I just I just had a lot of a passion which brought up a lot of uh, positive emotions for me and I just thought it was something that really made me feel fulfilled you know I get to come on here and use my experiences to talk about certain avenues of life mental health like training all kinds of different things right so that actually leads me in today's episode which is believing in yourself and the importance of building impeccable self-worth because this is something that I never really was fortunate to have for most of my life. Like I never really believed in myself as a young child or up until my early teens as well and uh, early 20s, I should say. And uh, building self-worth has been something that I've been on a journey for the last, I'd say, three years, really finding who I am amongst everything that I've been through amongst my life and really finding my anchor for me, Trayvon Burns, you know, and uh, I guess some of you guys now know my full name is Trayvon, but um, so I want to talk about believing in yourself and, and, uh, and the importance of building impeccable self-worth because many of us struggle with self-doubt, negative self-talk, and all of this can undermine our confidence and prevent us from achieving our goals, and I was caught in this cycle for years, but with the right mindset and tools, we can cultivate a strong sense of self-worth and learn to trust ourselves, which isn't a topic that is talked about enough, is our personal integrity with ourselves, you know, like us trusting ourselves, having a good word with ourselves and standing true behind it, you know, so I don't think self-worth and um, believing in yourself is just talked about, I mean, believing in yourself is, but it, it ends up being falling on deaf ears, if that makes sense, because it's like, oh, believe in yourself. So for me personally, with today's podcast is I'm going to break this down into four sections. Number one is the power of self-belief. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about building self-worth. We'll talk about embracing your strengths your strength and passions. And we'll talk about taking action and how to move forward. So section one, the power of self-belief, is all about believing in yourself. And it's not just some fluffy idea that, like I said, is washed up and like it falls on deaf ears now. It's a powerful mindset that can make a real difference in your life. When you believe in yourself, you're more likely to take risks, try new things, and persist in the face of setbacks and what life throws at you. The importance of this is crazy because you won't fold under life's pressures as often. You won't cave to your depression or your anxiety or your self-limiting beliefs or your, your insecurities because you believe in yourself. That powerful mindset shift is key. By believing in yourself, you're more likely to attract positive opportunities and experiences that others are drawn to. Too, because everyone's drawn to your confidence and your and your enthusiasm and your enthusiastic attitude towards what you're doing. It's almost like creating a sense of FOMO, if you will, where people start to be envious of your vibe, your culture, and community. You know, like everyone's like, "Oh, how's he thriving so well?" When everyone's kind of engulfed in their own insecurities, right? So. It's so important just to believe in yourself, like 100%, like even just even just keeping that that space in your mind to not, even if you don't understand what that looks like for you yet, just understand that like, hey, let's just try, you know, let's just knock on that door, let's scratch the surface of whatever it is. Because if you struggle with self-doubt and a negative self-talk, it can be challenging to tap into this powerful mindset, which is what leads me to section two of this podcast, the second part I want to bring up, which how you can build some self-belief is by building your self-worth, <clears throat> is by building your self-worth. So how can you build your self-worth and captivate a stronger belief in yourself? Well, the first step is to challenge your negative self-talk and replace it with more positive avenues that empower you. You know, this can involve practicing positive affirmations, visualizing successes, reframing negative experiences in a more positive light. And I feel like a broken record with this one because I feel like multiple times a week I'm talking about affirmations, journal routines, and the importance of the space and time that it creates for you. But I'm going to break it down for a little bit. Uh, for positive affirmations, I'm going to break it down for what I do personally. So I make sure I journal a minimum of five times a week for 
my standard to keep my standard of my of what I'm talking about, my self belief, my self worth. It keeps me it keeps me in rhythm, and I do positive affirmations every time I do my journal entries. Now, this is the key: is I write out each positive affirmation three times over. I do three affirmations every time I do my journal routine, and I do three three times over each of them meaning each affirmation gets written over 15 times over the co- over the course of a week so i want you to understand the importance of that reframing your thought pattern to be wired in a way that serves you you know like at the very beginning when i'll talk about that in a bit about how the beginning is the hardest but you need to understand the, uh, the impact this has on you after you do it for a week a month a year like let's think one affirmation which is one i use all the time which is um it can be as great as you want it to be that's an affirmation that i use all the time I use it my clients use it i just think it's a great one because it gives you that it can be as great as you want it to be it can be as great as you want it to be it can be as great as you truly want it to be and by writing that oh three times over for the amount of 15 times a week it just i can't over i just don't want to overshadow or oversee the value in that because like I'm saying it compounds over time so to get into the visualizing um, visualizing successes this is actually something that like took me a while to pick up but it's actually something that's like changed my life immensely and that's vision boards I have vision boards I have whiteboards that have uh, pictures and drawings all over and I even have pictures all around my house to consistently remind myself of my vision and where I'm heading in my life. I have my wallpaper on my phone and my laptop as my vision board. And sometimes I even take, it was funny, like we did this a lot during COVID, me and Emma, but we even had markers and we wrote our affirmations on our mirrors as well. And our, our, our small things that we want to do every day to keep our standard to where we know we could keep it, to believe in ourselves, like it's like no other and have uh, an immense amount of self-worth, right? And it's almost like a double whammy, like by uh, writing it on the mirror and stuff. Like there's so many different avenues you could do, but I could honestly talk about this stuff for hours, so I'm just going to jump ahead and continue because, uh, yeah, that's a very big passion of mine. But So on top of these, in order to believe in yourself, which is number one, and to build self-worth, which is number two, you have to develop a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset a bo- along both sides of these. You need to understand that you need to simply look at challenges and setbacks as opportunities for learning and growing rather than the sources of failure. Trust me, I know this is easier said than done, but a quote that changed my outlook for uh, for this was, for me personally, I've always looked at, I, I was always a negative Nancy, always looking at things as the, the glass is half full, failures, but look at gaps as opportunities versus failures. Gaps mean there's opportunities for growth. So instead of looking at your life in certain avenues and be like, oh my God, I got to do this or there's this gap or there's this and I could be here if I was here or this. Those are opportunities for you to take action to grow. Now, I know this isn't all relevant all the time, but by even as simply as starting with this point of view, it does compound and make the world of a difference over time. There's always opportunities that are present if you choose to motherfucking see them. I get hyped up with that one. I always do it because it's, it's, it's a big passion for mine. I had a very negative mindset for the majority of my life. And like I said, now that I'm doing these podcasts, I'm really enjoying them. It's a really big fulfillment and self-expressive avenue of my life for me. I just get really hyped up. And I want you guys to feel the energy because I do know what it's like to be on the opposite end of what I'm talking about with no self-belief, no self-worth, and very low energy frequency the whole nine yards. So this actually leads me into... Um, a really big pivotal point in terms of how you can believe in yourself more, how you can create more self-worth. And that is by leading into the third section of the podcast, which is embracing your strengths and your own passions, embracing who you are as a person. Because when you know what you're good at and what you enjoy, it's a lot easier to feel confident and fulfilled in your pursuits. This involves exploring new hobbies, learning new skills, and or seeking out new opportunities for growth and development. You can always benefit from seeking out supportive relationships and communities that share your same interests and values as well. So it's important to build your life as around the things you're passionate about because you can't you can't take that away from yourself. You can't help if you're if you're passionate about certain things. Like me with mental health, I tried taking the business route with uh, fitness. I tried going to school for business. And every time I worked in the in the, the fitness field, I was always business. I was a manager of overseeing other things. So I do have passion for business as well. But the thing that for me was, I'm, one, I'm really good at business. I'm uh, sorry, I'm really good at fitness. And that was a passion that I denied because I didn't believe myself. I didn't believe myself. And once I started to build my self-worth, I was like, wow, like I really want to really want to be in this this other light you know so something that really helped me hone in on my skills my confidences and my like things that I'm passionate about was a book that I highly recommend by Marcus Buckingham now discover your strengths 
because I thought that just the way he, every self-help book, everyone's always focusing on like, you know, you got to fix this to be better over here or, you know, you got to be a jack of all trades. And it was like, this book was the first one that was like, yo, like, what are you good at? Take away the things you're not good at and just hone in and go 110% on the things you're great at. And to give you a reference as me being a coach in this space, like I've, I've been doing this since 2020 and I didn't take off until the last six months or so. So like I've been doing this every single day, trying to believe in myself more until I compound so I feel better, building up my self-worth, these whole things, then digging into my, by like exploring new hobbies, exploring new skills and seeking out opportunities to grow, you know, changing my friend group, getting supportive, more supportive relationships in my life, changing my community to have more similar interests and values, you know? So it's, uh, it's really important to understand not the simplicity of what I'm saying, but to understand the weight of what I'm talking about, you know, because like this is actually what leads me into the fourth section, which is about taking action and moving forward. Because ultimately, building self-worth and believing in yourself comes down to taking action and moving forward. You can't think of any of these avenues of life. And just because you're thinking of them or you're now aware of them, that they're, you're assuming that they're going to get better on their own. Because that's the victim mentality in you. And you need to check that at every avenue. And I hate to say it, but no one is going to fucking save you in this life. No one at all. Every second of every single day is on you, regardless of your situation. And I know, and I'm not undermining what certain adversities and certain places that some people are in with their life, but it's important to just take that little bit that you can build ground on and set goals and take steps towards achieving them, even if they feel scary as fuck and outside of your comfort zone. Everyone experiences setbacks and failures on their path to success. So don't let the animosity of these changes break you. These experiences that you're letting break you, the animosity, the, fail, the, the, the fear of failure, these experiences can be valuable opportunities for learning and growing. And they say pressure creates diamonds, and I'm a firm believer, I'm a firm believer that with all of the avenues of self-belief and self-worth I've mentioned today, can put your, you can definitely put yourself in a position to only feel the pressure of growth on your terms. That's what I kind of mean about like at the beginning saying, I know at the beginning it's hard, but with time and practice, you can develop the resiliency and develop the self-confidence to overcome these obstacles and achieve your goals. The start in the beginning is always the fucking hardest. All you need to do, and I know I'm not under, I'm not undervaluing it, but all you need to do is just get your first set of wins and compound them from there. Literally. Like I said, I started this in 2020. I didn't start seeing success until the last six to eight to nine months. So that means there's almost 12 to 14 months, upwards of 15 months of me doing things that nobody knew. Me doing things that nobody saw. Me doing things solely on the purpose of me building my self-belief, building my self-worth, honing in on my skills, the things that make me confident, the things that make me feel passionate, and then taking it into action. So to wrap this all up, believing yourself and building impeccable self-worth is essential for living a fulfilling and satisfying life. By challenging your negative self-talk, embracing your strengths and passions, and taking action towards your goals, you can cultivate a strong sense of self-worth and confidence that will serve you in so many other aspects of your fucking life. I used to be the most insecure person I've ever met, and now I don't see anything at fucking all stop me from living my life to the absolute fullest. And now that I'm in this position, do you think I'm going to let myself stop myself? Not at fucking all. So I'm going to end it right there. I hope you guys all have a blessed motherfucking week. I appreciate you guys all from the bottom of my heart to the top. And let's fucking go. Cool.